Sensaba Tunnel. Sensaba Tunnel is built in Tennessee in the 1920s as part of the road, and was named for the man that owned the land, Edward Sensaba. Old Ed features prominently in the legends behind the place. Your opinion on Ed is likely to be very different depending on which version you hear. In the kinder version, Ed led a homeless man into his home as an act of charity. Their guest tried to steal jewelry, so Ed confronted him with a gun. The thief grabbed Ed's baby daughter to use as a shield, and ran out of the house. He got away and drowned the baby in the tunnel. Another version omits the homeless man, and Paint said Sensaba as a madman, that killed his entire family, baby included, and threw their bodies into the tunnel. However she died, that baby is said to haunt the tunnel today, locals say that, if you switch off your car engine in the middle of the tunnel, it won't switch back on. You can also hear the baby's cry, and the approaching footsteps of Ed himself. An investigation by the Southern States Paranormal Research Society, concluded that ghostly activity is sadly lacking. But they suggest an even more fascinating explanation for the tunnel's reputation. Edward Sensabaugh lived into his old age, not dying until the 1950s. None of his children died as babies. By the time Ed grew old, vandals and hormonal teenagers had taken to using the tunnel for their respective fun. Ed wasn't happy about that fact. If you had your own tunnel, you'd probably not want teenagers ruining it either. Ed's weapon was an unusual talent for mimicking animal cries. He would hide at one end of the tunnel and fill it with an eerie shriek, scaring off anyone hiding inside. The Blue Ghost Tunnel A paranormal investigator was trying to find the screaming tunnel but got lost. He found himself at the much longer Meriden Tunnel, a rail tunnel in the nearby city of Thaw Earld. There he claimed he saw a strange blue mist. The tunnel's reputation soon surpassed its screamier cousin. The TV show Creepy Canada did a feature on it, prompting thousands of visitors a year. It's a popular choice in lists of Canada's most haunted places, and some have called it the most haunted one of all. The ghosts here are said to belong to two rail engineers, that died when the steam locomotives they were operating collided in 1903. One of the men became mangled in the boiler, and died at the scene. When rescuers tried to pull him free, his legs came off. The fireman of the other train fell into the flames, and suffered burns on 90% of his body. He died hours later at a nearby hospital. As an added bonus for hauntitude, when the canal that runs above the tunnel was built, it flooded a nearby cemetery. The tunnel became so popular that authorities were forced to brick it up, and the tunnel may be structurally unsafe. Today, one of the paranormal groups that made it famous recommends avoiding it at night. You're more likely to be threatened by a drunken youth than a dead rail worker. The Screaming Tunnel The legend of the Screaming Tunnel in Niagara Falls begins with a young girl that met an unfortunate fate. There are a few versions of the story, but each one agrees that she lived in a farmhouse on the south side of the tunnel. One night her house caught fire, and she fled the building with her clothes ablaze. She reaches the tunnel before she fell to the ground, and that is where she perished. Other tales say she was set on fire deliberately by her raging father, or that she was raped, and burned in the tunnel to hide evidence. The legend says that if you stand in the center of the tunnel, and light a match, the match will go out. You will then hear the screams of the dying girl. Shanghai tunnels for around a century, the city of Portland, Oregon was home to an unfortunate practice, known as being Shanghai. Men were kidnapped, locked up, and eventually forced to work on ships sailing to Asia. Women were kidnapped, and sold for the same reasons they are today, to be forced to work as prostitutes. While there's no direct evidence, local legend says that, the victims were transported, and held in the underground tunnel system beneath Portland's old town. This legend has made the tunnels extremely popular with ghost hunters. 
Most people that claim ghostly activity report, a woman in a white dress. Others say, they hear harsh male whispers, telling them to get out or, perhaps more worryingly, stay. Another ghost reported by the tunnel's tour guides is Joshua, a nine-year-old boy, who used to empty chamber pots for money. The tour guides have a lot of stories of sounds and apparitions. While they may believe what they report, they do so with drama. The tunnel's main curator, Michael P. Jones, has the demeanor of an unassuming horror film character. If nothing else, he was able to thoroughly creep out one local TV news presenter. If this was a horror film, she'd probably have been among the ghost's first victims.